December 28, 1944. The temperature was 11 degrees over Lake Michigan, about 20 miles off the coast of Chicago. Our hero, Ensign William Forbes, was taking off from his makeshift aircraft carrier for the third time that day. According to him, as he approached the edge of the deck, his engine just sputtered and stopped. Ensign Forbes rolled off the front of the aircraft carrier in his FM-2 Wildcat fighter. The ship ran him over and ultimately broke his airplane in half with its large paddle wheel. When the ship cleared him, our hero was able to escape from his cockpit and was soon rescued from the icy Lake Michigan waters. But his airplane was about to never see sunlight for the next 68 years. His Wildcat succumbed to a fate shared with almost 130 World War II aircraft, an expected final resting site at the bottom of Lake Michigan. But how did all of those airplanes get there? In 1942, the Navy needed to train new pilots to fly in the war. With all of their aircraft carriers out at sea, the Navy purchased two ships that took people and cargo up and down the Great Lakes. They flattened their decks, and soon two new two-thirds scale aircraft carriers were born. Every day over the next three years, the Wolverine and Sable left the Navy Pier to train new pilots to do what is arguably the most difficult maneuver any pilot can do, land on a moving ship. Do that eight times, you're off to fly in the war. Almost 17,000 pilots became heroes over Lake Michigan, and 128 airplanes were lost to the lake, including this Wildcat. 68 years after its crash, it was resurrected, and the Navy needed to find a team with the passion and the dedication to bring this Wildcat back to greatness. It found that at the Air Zoo. This remarkable team of 75 volunteers shows up at the Air Zoo committed to bringing Ensign Forbes' Wildcat back to its former glory and committed to each other and the Air Zoo in inspiring and educating our community with every interaction. This team is technically spectacular in inventing how to re rebuild and restore an airplane that was broken in two, creating new forms and structures by hand and building a giant rotisserie that exists nowhere else in the world to reconnect the tail to the fuselage for the first time in 73 years. But they're not only restoring airplanes, they're transforming lives. We have 90-year-olds who say this work is keeping them alive, 50-year-olds who cherish this work as a second life, and 20-year-olds who recognize that this work is preparing them for a future life well-lived. We have middle school and high school students come and work directly on the airplane, getting the most meaningful hands-on immersion in history and science and technology that may very well be their aha moment that propels them to a future technical career right here in Michigan. We provide opportunities for visitors like Jane Doyle, courageous member of the Women's Air Force Service Pilots in World War II, and Buzz Carpenter, former SR-71 pilot, ways to reconnect to their own incredible aviation histories and to re-inspire them to tell their stories to the world. This work is so transformative that Navy Admiral Sam Cox came to visit to see for himself the program and the educational impact that we're having. After one day of working with students, he told us he wants this program emulated across the country and then asked if we wanted another airplane. This SBD Dauntless dive bomber served at Pearl Harbor during World War II and fought in the critical Battle of the Coral Sea. On February 18, 1944, its carburetor froze as Lieutenant John Lendo was coming in for a landing on another Lake Michigan training run. Another accident, another pilot saved, another journey to the bottom of the lake for six decades, another airplane coming to the air zoo with an opportunity to ignite its history, to broadcast its incredible story, and to transform the lives of all who touch it like these two. Two weeks after we received the airplane, I got a call from Dr. Arthur Lendo on the left, nephew of the last pilot of that SBD. Though he and his brother Kevin never knew their heroic uncle, they wanted to support in every way they could to bring their uncle's story to life. 
So Dr. Lendo came to the Air Zoo to connect with the SBD and his wonderful uncle. There was not a dry eye in the place when Dr. Lendo first peered into that cockpit where his uncle once sat and connected with his uncle in a deeper way than he ever has before. And so tonight, I come to you live from that cockpit, thinking about the transformations of airplanes and people that happen every day at the Air Zoo as a corollary to the transformations that are happening in our communities, in our businesses and individuals all over the world. Because just like those World War II aircraft that are on the bottom of the lake, we too are in a state of dormancy, of survival, of untapped potential, yearning for the lives we once lived, longing for the impact we once have, and craving those activities and relationships that made us whole. So now is the time to rise up, to transform, to restore the best of what we were, and make that infinite, and invent new ways for our communities and our neighborhoods to thrive in a more trusting and loving, empowering way. And like William Forbes and John Lendo, who emerged from the lake stronger and more resilient than ever to change our world for the better, so too must we transform during this pandemic to change our world for the best. Like our heroic pilots, we will fly again, higher than ever. Thank you.